Good afternoon. Welcome to Edusat Network. Friend, today we are going to discuss another the very important topic, media and public sphere. Public health spheres has been propounded by uh, important thinker Habermas. We will try to understand his views and how he has tried to give this concept a concrete shape. And we will also try to understand in the present situation, the new media emergence, how have impact on this and its still relevance in Indian scenario or not. We will try to understand all these aspects. And for discussion on this very topic, we have in the studio Dr. M. N. Thakur. He is a renowned political science thinker and he has keen interest in media and politics. And presently, he is an associate professor in uh, Center for Political Science, Jawaharlal Nehru University. So, on your behalf, I welcome Dr. Thakur for Educate lecture on this topic, media and public sphere. Welcome, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Amrind. Uh, what I'm going to do today is that I'm going to take a few issues related to the idea of the public sphere. First, I will try to discuss the concept of the public sphere, then try to see the link between public sphere and democracy, and then I'll try to see how public sphere has evolved in India. Uh, can we call uh, the institutions which were earlier in India as public sphere institutions or not? Uh, then we will uh, pick up types of contemporary public sphere institutions like cinema, media and internet. Part of the discussion will focus on the idea that the way internet has become very important, Facebook, uh, YouTube, blog, all these things are emerging as major medium of expression and we have seen in last few months or couple of years that people have been expressing themselves on these media and they are no more uh, irrelevant. Mm, we see that all the political parties are taking cognizance of this kind of media. We are also seeing that uh, each media is taking cognizance of the other media. There is a kind of synergy of the media system also. Is all the newspapers are available on the internet. Newspapers are being summarized in the t on the television. There are time slots given for Facebook discussions on the television. Uh, there are spaces given for discussions of YouTube, Facebook on in the newspapers. So, these media are also emerging together. So, what has been the relationship of this new emergence, emerging media with democracy? And I will talk about all these things with a special reference to Indian democracy and Indian situation. That's my agenda today. Let me pick up first the idea of the public sphere itself. We know that the idea of the public sphere was given by a German uh, philosopher called uh, Jürgen Habermas. Habermas is one of the prominent thinkers of uh, what you call Frankfurt School of uh, Political Theory. Frankfurt School is known for its amalgamation of psychoanalysis and uh, Marxism. So, it tries to understand the dynamics of consciousness, the dynamics of the sphere which is not the sphere of the political economy only. So, it has expanded Marxism to undertake the research on some domains which are not traditionally, Marx, traditionally uh, the domains in which Marxists were interested. And this Particularly, this is this was done in the light of the Second World War. We all know that in Second World War, Germany faced major crisis, and the emergence of Hitler made independent intellectual engagement quite difficult, and people in Germany were unable to understand. The intellectuals in Germany were unable to understand why this kind of phenomena emerged. And therefore, they started looking into the culture, into the culture of fascism, into the kind of consciousness studies. So, large number of people got interested in this and Habermas is one who has been talking about that holocaust and that trying to try to see how uh, in fact uh, these things should not happen again. So, it is in this context that Habermas has created this idea of public sphere and, and 
he thinks that pub the idea of the public sphere is extremely important for the working of the uh, democracy. His general work, his work generally focuses on social theory, epistemology, analysis of capitalist society, democracy, contemporary politics, and modern modernity. So, one of the arguments that Habermas has been given that giving that how what we are seeing at the contemporary moment is not postmodernism, postmodernity, but high modernity. A modernity is new phase where the new technology has emerged, new things have emerged. So, Habermas's major concern is that how do we retain the democracy, particularly in Germany, but that particular concern is a global concern for everybody. So, some of the ideas that Habermas has worked out are taken as a general ideas in the theory of democracy and public sphere is one of those prominent ideas. Habermas wrote extensively on the concept of public sphere using accounts of dialogue that take place took place in the coffee houses in 18th century England. We know in Europe you will find that in the modern period there was a new space that was created and that space was a space of public dialogue, the engagement between people of high repute on the issues which were in important for the polity, for the politics, for the contemporary scenario and coffee houses played very important role in that. Coffee houses have played very important role in India too. We all know that during the emergency and also before that major meetings were held in the coffee houses in different parts of the country. There were a series of coffee houses which were very famous for holding meetings of the political leaders, thinkers, writers. These were the spaces where intellectuals used to meet and debate and discuss the contemporary issues. So, Habermas starts with that, then he goes on to analyze, Habermas develops the normative notion of the public sphere as a part of social life, where citizens can exchange views on matters of importance to the common good, so that public opinion can be formed. Following the transformation of public opinion, the public will then incite political action. So, that is the idea of the public sphere, that normally in the private sphere, we do not discuss the politics too much. And even if we discuss politics, that does not really influence the, the political decision making process. But there are public spaces in societies where people of different opinion, they come together, they debate and discuss and those things then generally give, go to the public. So, earlier it was a geographical spaces and geographical in the sense that the space in, in typical sense, but gradually with the innovation of new technologies, things changed and now we can see that there are new domain created permanently existing, where people express their opinions, they engage in dialogues and debates and those dialogues and debates are extremely important for the modern state to understand the, un, the, the opinion of the people. So, we have cinema, we have newspapers, we have uh, some kind of uh, theater groups. So, so many places are there, so many spaces are there from which where we get those opinions and these places Habermas thinks are extremely important for any democracy as there is a, these are the channels to, for communication between the citizen and the state. Habermas further showed that how the public sphere was cultivated through media and how the public was able to influence politics and society through that. He also shows, emphasizes the critical role of the media in the public sphere distribution between, between the early press who highlighted political controversy and the more recent developments of media that commodity, comm commodify the news. So, you have, you have a range of things happening. You have the news media, I will come to that in the Indian context, how the news media grew in India as in, in the part of, in, as a process of anti-colonial struggle and gradually got into the, uh, into the realm of capital production. So, there are new dimensions emerging, it is always evolving, the sphere is always evolving and this public sphere of any kind is extremely important for democracy. That is the point Habermas makes and I want to emphasize that point uh, that there is, a, there is a strength in this argument that how do the public not only make their opinion public, but also they generate that debate, they generate that opinion. 
So the process of generation of the opinion and making that public, bringing that to the public domain, this is something crucial for a democracy in any country. As there is a dialogue and debate in that the opinions are scrutinized, examined, dominant arguments are refuted, new arguments are formed, dominant arguments are modified and this is how the state, the modern state can understand the minds of the people and reformulate their policies. So, public sphere as Habermas suggests, please, uh, uh, suggests that is equivalent to the public opinion that is the main idea of the Habermas that public sphere is basically public opinion. But he also emphasizes that we have to remember that the success of the public opinion depends on few factors and this is very important to note and we shall see whether these factors are now available or these factors are declining. According to Habermas, the most important factor is the degree of the the, 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 the degree of the autonomy of the public sphere. No class, no caste, no community dominates it, controls it, neither even the state controls it. So, the autonomous press, the autonomous space for expressing their opinion is extremely important for a good vibrant public sphere. The other thing is that the extent of the access to the public sphere and equal access to the public sphere. So, imagine if in media it is dominated by only one single caste, one single class, then probably the opinions of society will not be reflected in the media. Therefore, it depends how much space has been given to different sections of society in the public sphere. That will define the kind of nature of the public sphere, the vibrancy of the public sphere. The third thing is the rejection of the hierarchy, so that each might participate in the public sphere. Every individual can participate in the public sphere. So, how much open space is available will define the nature of the public sphere, the vibrancy of the public sphere and fourth is the last one is the quality of participation. Not that you go there and shout, not that you go there and make abuse, use abusive languages against each other. The public sphere's vibrancy depends on how much argumentative people are who are participating in the debate. So, the focus should be on a very rationally worked out arguments and it is, it is the war between the arguments not between people. The arguments win and arguments lose in the public sphere if that is the situation, then that should be considered as a vibrant public sphere. Now, we will see whether these things are still there or in the world of internet where everybody can reach to the public sphere, everybody can make their opinion public, there is a decline in the public sphere. There is a problem in the public sphere. This, it is easy to become abusive, it is easy to use language which nobody wants to hear. So, if that is true, then the autonomy of the public sphere will also be under crisis as states can locate those, those people and autonomy can also be under crisis due to the emerging polarization in the society. We will see, we will talk about it how in India this has been one of the issues that how society gets polarized and when you are debating in the public sphere, even if you are giving very rational argument, it may be conceived, it may be created, it may be uh, taken as if it is an attack on the community and there will be a problem. So, public sphere's quality depends on how does it actually follow these four ideas that, that Habermas puts forward. However, there is a tendency, there is a tendency in the third world, even in the first world that the public sphere is being re feudalized. I will come to that when I will talk about how public sphere, the, the, the elements of public sphere or components of public sphere are now being mostly owned by some people and what kind of autonomy do we have there, what kind of space do we have there, how do, how much do we think that we are using a rational argument to, to, to understand these things. So, we will come to this point. Uh, public sphere has also been transforming structurally, 
and that is the point I was making that how with the emergence of massive capitalist penetration into different areas, how growing interest of capital and growing interest of various kinds of agents of capital, you see the control of the public opinion, the public, uh, public sphere and in order to control the public opinion. So, we have to see how these things are working and there is a possibility that there is a structural transformation taking place. It is not question of degree anymore, there is a new kind of thing that is emerging. We will talk about that in a, in, a, in a while. Let me now switch over to what is called evolution in, of public sphere in India. It is interesting to see. Now, the, we know that this concept is not an Indian concept in the sense that it is given by the German philosopher, conceptualized by a German philosopher in the context of Germany, in the context of post World War Germany, where he was trying to see that these spaces were closed during the World War or before that. And since these spaces were closed, society could not engage in meaningful dialogues. And since society could not engage in meaningful dialogues, consequently the fascism grew. That was the assumption. So, if society is open, if multiple communities, multiple opinions, multiple kinds of people are living together and their opinions are debated, discussed, rationally debated, then probably the possibility of this kind of uh, emergence of fascism will be less. There is a possibility that conflicts can be resolved merely by debating. The conflicts might be resolved merely by engaging with other kind of opinion. Something about which Kozin Karatani says there is a trans critique that is needed that we need we should be ready to accept others viewpoint and we should be ready to engage with the others viewpoint that is the idea. But this idea this idea of, of public sphere to can we say that it was existing in the pre modern period in India as in the pre modern period in Europe probably there were certain institutions where they used to meet definitely. But what happened in, in India is it that with the emergence of with the coming of the colonialism or the modernity we have these institutions or we can say that no these institutions probably were having some kind of roots in India too. So, if we if we talk about it I can we can see that there are three major three major print media three major uh, uh, spheres three major aspects of public uh, public sphere. One is of course, the print media other is the electronic media and third is the social media which is a new domain. Now, can we say that there was something called pre public sphere institutions in India apart from these three because we know that the print media emerged only in the colonial period as a printing press started that time. And of course, electronic media was very late uh, cinema and electronic media everything all three came with the modern period, but can we say that these there was a kind of pre modern or pre public sphere institution in India which was very popular I think there was. Of course, in 18th century England or in Europe you find emergence of that public, but there were other institutions where they must be meeting. But in Indian context definitely we can say that this village society which was which Gandhi says the, the village civilization had certain public spaces where people would meet and exchange their ideas and that is how these societies probably survive. For instance, take the northeast area. In the northeast area, there is a very interesting institution called in Assam particularly Namgar. Namgar is basically a, a religious institution where people from a village, every village has a Namgar. There is a space for sitting of the people and they come and sit there, they sing songs, they they pray, they do everything, but that is also a place where people debate and discuss. If there is a crisis in society, they come together in that place and they debate and discuss. And those discussions and debates have political significance as they pass their norms, rules, something like that and that is being carried out in society. So, this is a very, very important institution through which they, they, they arrange their political being the smaller in the smaller context. Similarly, you have in north of Bihar or part of Bihar something called Machan. 
Machan is a space which is in a way public space. It is in a private domain, but at the outer skirt of the private domain. So it is between public and the private domain where people come and sit and meet and they discuss. And the best interesting thing about the machan is that people have a very, very informal relationship on the machan. The household in the fringe of which the machan is located uh, on which around say 30 to 40 people can sit together and discuss. Whenever somebody comes to that machan, it is not considered to be mandatory for the household to manage the formal tea or coffee, nothing to offer. They do not offer anything, not even water. There is a tube well around, they take water from there. Anybody passing by can sit down and participate in the discussion. Anybody can leave any time. So, this is a very interesting institution that, that I think took care of, of public communication. In during my field work, I discovered in some of the places these machans uh, were also used for conflict resolution. Not only that, the, the information gathering for resolving the conflict, even for that, these machans were used. So, one would like to work on such institutions and history of such institutions, how they have worked in society, how they have done something, some work that probably public sphere is supposed to do. I am not saying that they were public sphere in the sense at the national level. I am not saying that these machans were interconnected among themselves and would generate certain kind of idea. I am simply saying that these were the smaller institutionalized, informal institutionalized seg uh, uh, segment of society where the public communication used to take place, the debates used to take place. And of course, in these debates, it was not always irrational as it was not dominated by anybody. Even if the, the householder who has created that machan has any control on the debate in the machan. In fact, in many places I discovered that they believe that most of their opponents come to that machan and they get a chance to abuse, the, abuse them as they do not uh, or use abusive arguments or language against them as they cannot ask them to go from the machan. So, it is a democratic space, it is not a dry room, it is not the dalan generally we know about that something which is a private domain where the order of the householder is the final. Machan is private yet public and this is the best source of information exchange and debating on the contemporary issues. Similarly, you have something called the Patiya tradition in, in, in Bhopal. What happens in the Patiya tradition? In the evening, people would come and sit on the Patiya and discuss and debate and develop critique in a very, very, uh, very, very uh, informal way. It is not that they, they formally critique something, but they would informally through jokes, through satires, through some kind of poetry, through some kind of general discussions, they will generate their public opinion. In fact, it is said that the Maharani of Bhopal used to send her people to the to the Patiyas, different Patiyas, where they would collect information about the functioning of the state, that how state is being liked or disliked by the people. And there are many Patiyas unknown by somebody's Patiya, where people, anybody can come and sit and chat in the evening. So, this, these institutions are interesting as these are not simple social institutions. I think these have important political role to play. In Bengal, if you go, there is something called Adda. Adda is also kind of pre-public sphere space, nothing formalized, but non hierarchized Anybody can enter and debate and leave that place. So, these things are common in many parts of the country. One can collect the data regarding such institutions in different parts of the country, but one can cannot deny that such institutions did exist and they played very important role, which one may say at this moment where the roles of public sphere or one can say it is a pre-public sphere. The public is not as dialogical, as informed as Habermas is imagining, but yet it was a kind of common space where people used to come and sit and chat. Now, let us look at the formal public sphere, emergence of public sphere in Indian context and the first thing I want to take is the newspaper. The newspaper as public sphere, 
that created the public sphere or it, it, is, it is a kind of public sphere. Uh, it emerged in the colonial period. In the colonial period, mostly the vernacular language newspaper, the, the small magazines, the small newspapers were published from different parts of the country. The printing press was available, was possible to be used, sold in different parts of the country for communication purposes. The vernacular press started publishing things. And they had a lot, lot of impact because people used to watch, wait for those magazines and journals to come. They would smuggle these things everywhere. A magazine called Saraswati, published from Allahabad. Five consecutive editors were arrested, I'm told, by the British government, the colonial state. If they were arrested, it means the magazine must have huge power to communicate. Similarly, a number of things were produced by political leaders themselves as their, their, their mouthpieces. Gandhi used to publish something called Harijan. And through that, he would communicate to the people. And many debates would take place in these magazines about each other. So that emerged, since that emerged in the colonial period as part of the anti-colonial struggle, so you discover that they have a typical critical tendency, very, very critical tendency, particularly in the vernacular newspaper. If you see even today, you will find that they are more critical to the state than the English newspaper. There is a, there is a very interesting uh, uh, growth in this field. Gradually, in the post-independence period, you will find that the small media, the, the alternative media emerged during the freedom struggle, gradually disappeared. Gradually, you have emergence of media houses in India. And in the first phase of these media houses, they've conceptualized themselves as an independent actor in democracy and with full of responsibility. So the media houses thought that they will give autonomy to the media persons and the media to say whatever it wants to. But gradually we have seen that since the media houses are owned by capitalist classes, some kind of control is started working on that. Uh, one can very easily see in many movies this has been reflected that how the media actually is not independent from its own owner. We have a film called, what is that film? A film called uh, uh, Capital. Uh, there is a film on media where it is shown that how the person actually manipulates media for political gains. So you have many discussions about the ownership of the media and how it plays with various kinds of things now various kinds of issues now that initial autonomy that they maintain gradually got got eroded one can see how in the during the election period the media starts publishing sponsored news is sponsored news there was a phase uh, an editor wrote a very interesting article on this that there was a phase when in order to understand the possible results, electoral results in India, the editor tried to get vernacular newspapers, collected them together, worked on that and could declare the possibility of victory of a political party and more or less it was correct. But when it was repeated recently, they discovered that the same newspaper was publishing both in favor and in against of a candidate. Then it was discovered that probably it was not an independent news collected by the news agency or by the journalist, but it was sponsored by somebody and the money was paid for that. Now there is a whole case of sponsored money that we are in uh, sponsored news that we are debating these days. Now probably it has gone further. An editor is generally supposed to be 
autonomous from the management as editor is an, considered to be an intellectual guiding the guiding the Indian democracy should have been should have enough space for that kind of thing. But we have seen in films like page 3 or in films in, in many films in fact where we see that the editor does not have that autonomy. In fact, now there is a new trend that is emerging that the prime minister calls important editors for discussion and st st editors start going with the prime minister on their on the prime minister's visit so that newspapers can report things properly. So, these are the new trends that is emerging. So, media that is print media is no more does not seem to be any more so autonomous that one can rely on that. Despite that, despite the fact that it is not free from class in the market, we have seen that print media has played very important role in the public debate in India. And right from colonial period, writing against the state, colonial state, struggling against the colonials, using media against the for the, for the struggle of colonials against the state, colonial state, we have seen media moving from there to the corporate hand and from corporate hand we are seeing now movie is, media is working for the corporate. So, these are new new phases emerging in the print media, yet one can say that media still has played very important role, even now it is playing very important role and since there are many competing media houses, one can see that things are properly exposed. There is another kind of public sphere, cinema and that is also very interesting as it is started in the modern period. In the pre modern period, you had entertainment industry, some kind of theatres and other things, but they were not mostly they were they were not able to generate larger public opinion, though we know that even in 1857 such kind of things were used. The theatres, plays they were used and through that opinions were created, but in the colonial period and after that gradually India has a huge film industry, very huge film industry. And if you look at the initial films India produced were of two kinds, one well, of course were the religious films, but more prominently the films emerged as social critique. We have many films in mind like Raj Kapoor's films where the social inequality was being critiqued, a vision was being presented. We have Upkar, Manoj Kumar's Upkar, where they wanted to use the film as a media to control medium to generate nationalist feeling, nation building. So, media played very important role that time. Gradually, we see the media, even this uh, cinema as media, has got into the market market in the sense media always cinema always has a market had a market it was always dependent on the market it always generated money from the market but now it was much more dependent on the market and in fact the difference between art or or public sphere the media is public part of the public sphere and media as capitalist enterprise that started vanishing I will come to this issue in a while, but let me see what are the issues that media picked up. I think media picked up the issue of the cinema as a medium, picked up the issue of nation building, it picked up the issue of caste, it was picked up the issue of community, it gave critique of capitalism, it gave critique of socialism, it gave critique of all kinds and it remains in the minds of the people. It is very interestingly it remains in the minds of the people. We have seen recently when there was a rape case victim and people did not know the name of the rape case victim, they named her as Damini. Now, Damini was a character in a film who was raped and somebody was fighting case for her in the court and every time the court was asking him to come again. So, dialogues of that film became was being, were being circulated during that period and Damini was the name that was given to this unknown girl, that time unknown girl. So, media, the cinema as a, as, a, as, a, as a medium of public sphere, as a part of the public sphere plays extremely important role and there are theories 
how does it play important role, how does it reflect the idea of the society, conflict of society, I'm not getting into that. But definitely it is an important role and Indian cinema has played crucially important role in that. But however, gradually we see a lot of debates that has taken place about the role of cinema in India and one can say that film like this film recently being debated about the terrorism, militancy and there was a protest. The film was banned in Tamil Nadu, Kamala Hassan's film, Vishurupam was banned and there was a lot of debate. I think one of the issues that to be debated is that whether Kamala Hassan has worked as an artist or it is the capitalist enterprise for which he is troubled. I think the difference between art and capitalist enterprise is, gr is gradually diminishing. And that is the concern of Habermas. He says that this public sphere of this kind, which is being controlled by some people, which is being controlled by the money, which is being part of the market strategy, has a big problem. But we also see that new things are emerging. Uh, digital films are emerging. Now the camera, video camera is so easily available. Hard disk, uh, uh, hard, hard disk, two big hard disk is available now with the camera so that you can really capture a lot of images. HD quality cameras, uh, cameras are available very cheap cost and individuals can buy them and make small films. So there is a new phase of digital films and very critical films are being made, documentaries are being made, new documentaries are being made on very critical issues, on the movements, on the politics of the movements, on the, on the failures of the state. These documentaries one can see coming up gradually and people like Anand Patwardhan who has decided not to make mainstream film and he has made few films which are very critical to the state power. Sometimes it is very critical to the political movement itself. The recent film by Anand Patwardhan, Jai Bhim Comrade is critique of the political movement, the radical political movement. So film as a medium, though the commercial, commercial feature film has entered into the domain of capital intensive industry, film as a medium remains there and it keeps shaping the opinion of the people. And we we'll keep seeing the films based on various kinds of issues which can be very, very critical issue for construction of democracy, so for, for the strength of our democracy and the critical presence of these films have made difference not only in the policy making and decision making, but also in the political movements. And then apart from these two dimensions, you have print media, you have electronic media, the television, the news channels, you have cinema, there are new media also emerging. But let me talk a little bit about the news channels as part of the public sphere and then come to the new media, this, uh, this internet media. We see that these channels are extremely important. Every evening if you open up these channels, you will find important people from different fields are invited and they are debating. They are constantly debating and those debates sometimes are rational, sometimes there are fights, but yet the, the media tries to keep the debate on. But then we also know that some of the news in these channels are paid news. Recently there was a case on G, G television when the director was caught taking some bribe. There was, there was a case of that kind. So we know that these media houses, this, this electronic media houses require huge amount of money and we are also told time and again that these electronic media houses try to generate certain resources by compromising on the news. This is also another problem that we are facing. And then we also know that now we do not need huge money for opening up the channel. 
Of course, political leaders have opened up their channels and they 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 air their views through, view through, through that, but also that smaller channels are coming up and interesting channels are coming up. They are bringing in people's opinion very fast. But much more than that, what is most, most interesting today is the emergence of internet media. It is a free space. It is a democratic space. Anybody can upload a YouTube. Anybody can blog something. Anybody go, can go on Facebook, put their comments. Facebook debates are taking place much more in much more interesting ways and much more immediately than the newspaper and the electronic media. I can quote certain issues, certain episodes where I can find that media played a very important role. There was a police brutality in one of the districts in Bihar and media did not report that. In fact, about the media, the then the press council chairman said that, well, what is this? The media in Bihar is completely controlled by the state. But then suddenly that emerged, that film came on the YouTube and large number of people watched that and the government of Bihar had to respond to that. We have seen that after death of an important leader, somebody put some opinion on the Facebook and the person was arrested. The fact that they were arrested only shows that Facebook has acquired a significance as medium of news communication. I think it is emerging in a big way and we know that it is Anna movement. People are saying that the whole movement was Facebook movement. Whether Facebook can run a movement or not, I do not know. But one cannot deny that Facebook can play a very, very important role in the movement in terms of communication. We see that, we saw that this Denny rape case and the movement against that. They did not depend on the channels, they did not depend on newspapers. The communication among the people happened through this media, the electronic media, that this uh, uh, internet media. So, this is also emerging in a big way and it is democratic space. We know that we need to restrain that there also. We know that we have to understand the power of this media. The com common people will have to power understand the power of this media, okay. but the state will also have to understand uh, so that these are open so spaces so for you, I people. Have a question. Yes, yes. I have question please, from. please come on. Uh, um, please ask your question. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Please ask your question. Uh, I have to ask a question about the about political science. Uh, Jiji, Saval Puchi. Sir, bad audio quality. Or disconnect. Continue. Anyway, so I am saying that this is a new thing that is coming up, new phase. Young children are now becoming politically conscious. They are commenting. There is a new public emerging and the Indian democracy will definitely be strengthened by the emergence of this new public and globally speaking the democracy will have to be more transparent. The immediate reaction by the state is that of the fear because there is a possibility of misuse of this. We have seen that there was some disturbance in the northeast and Facebook flashed certain kind of news item and there was a movement of students and workers from different parts of the country towards northeast and this created a huge crisis. We know there is a possibility of this kind too. But the more it is democratic, I think it will be better. So Habermas's theory that public sphere is, is something where a restrained space where you debate and discuss rationally, I think if that is implemented in this domain then there is a huge possibility of exchange of ideas okay. that might emerge. We have another question yeah. uh, from uh, Ujre. Uh, good afternoon, please ask question. Good afternoon, sir. One question is here. Sir. Yeah, go ahead, please baseless, ask question. Baseless information, baseless information will spoil the character of prominent person. This media is to respond uh, sorry, we are not getting your uh, uh, voice. 
from what I understood, uh, what about the um, uh, role of media about the voiceless people, how they are performing this was I think uh, asking how a media can play a role on the part of voiceless they are not, their media is not have reached so far still. No, you, you see now, uh, I, I can imagine when I was debating on this issue that I was told that the number of people using internet on mobile has grown like anything in India. And if it grows in the same way, then probably it will be the country having highest number of mobile user, internet users through mobile. And the mobiles are not only mobiles. Now they are, they, are, they are powerful equipments. They can capture a photograph and SMS that immediately on the Facebook. So from any part of the world, any part of the world seeing anything there, one can just capture the image and flash on the internet. So this is a big thing that is happening. And I think, I think it will gradually reach even to the voiceless people. Okay. And the digital media. Uh, we have again uh, Ujjain and Lime. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Good afternoon. Please ask question. Good afternoon, sir. Our question for you is: What information about the character of the person is media responsible for this or not? Is media? Is media responsible for it or not? Responsible for what? Uh, for uh, for being the character of uh, prominent personality. Public personality, okay, yeah. I got the question, I got the question. Yes, mm -hmm. media I think will have to be very, very responsible. And not only media has to be responsible, but also we, when we comment on the public personalities, we have to be very responsible. You have seen recently a case in Jaipur that some comment was given and it was misunderstood. When we are facing the media, be it the electronic media, the print media, of course, has. You are talking about Professor Ashish, Ashish Nandi. Nandi. Yes, okay. I'm talking about Ashish Nandi. Okay. That what happened? Some statement was given, whatever the meaning of this, this was, but it was conceived in a particular way, and it offended a lot of people. A lot of controversy emerged out of that. So intellectuals who are facing the media, the leaders who are facing the media. And the public who is using the media, facing the media, everybody has to be very careful because the new public sphere is emerging in India. And this new public sphere needs lot of patience, lot of argumentative skills and I hope Indian society will have that gradually and project itself as a democratic society by using this space very democratically. Okay, here when we analyze this uh, statement. Uh, he made a statement of that kind, Professor Nandi, on the basis of certain research, certain survey he conducted on that basis. Uh, but the reporter who reported it or the things uh, this move out to in the public sphere, uh, before uh, reaching to the public sphere reporting, uh, uh, you expect from the media person and journalist to go deeper in, uh, into the understanding of the personality of Professor Nandi, then only he should pass on this information or what uh, you expect from the reporter. A statement should be taken as a statement, yeah, he should understand the personality of the person who is speaking and then should report. No, I think there are two things. One is that I do not think that this statement was based on any research that he accepted that it is a normative statement, okay. it is not an empirical statement, he very clearly said that. Second thing that you know when it is live, the reporter does not have any, any scope of doing it. When it is going live, mm -hmm. the, the, I am speaking something right now here, you do not have any space to control my speech, whatever I am speaking, I am speaking. There is only one possibility that I have a style of formulating something, some sentence, some idea in a way that to arrive on the correct meaning of that, you require a certain kind of skill. That I can understand the kind of argument that is being given in favor of Professor Nandi. That is possibility. But an intellectual will, has to, will have to remember about the audience of the media. Media is not a faceless thing. It has an audience now. You are addressing somewhere. When you are using, you, if your audience is the scholarship, scholars of the country, then I can understand that you can request them to have patience and to work out and understand and think what they were saying. But 
when you okay. are addressing on a public uh, sorry, media. Sir, sorry to interrupt yeah. you, we have another question. Please ask your question. Sir, my question is, many people are visited to public through the media. What best we can do for it? What the question? Uh, pl uh, please reduce the volume of your uh, TV set, the only then you can ask the question. Uh, yeah. Sir, uh, many people are hesitant to come to public through media. Okay. So what we can do for it? Many people are hesitant to come uh, to pub public uh, through the media. So what about... No, that is true because there is a private, private hmm. domain, there is a private sphere and not that every private sphere should be made public. So therefore we don't want to make everything public, that's fine. But as far as Hesitation is concerned. If you want to come to public and you feeling you are feeling hesitant, I think that can be taken care of. That now you have this elect, this digital media, this this internet media can take care of that. There are many ways of going public, and that should be used for that purpose. Okay. Okay. Now continue with your. Yeah. So what I was saying is that uh, we are entering into a new phase new phase of public sphere. I, some people are saying that probably uh, Nandi was, uh, sorry, probably uh, okay. Halamas' idea of… Sorry, again, we have question from Ujre. Yeah, uh, please ask a question. Hello. Ji. Sir, I have a question about uh, media sector. Hello. Yeah, yeah, ask a question. Sir, what is the role of a media in a politics? Okay, role of media in politics. You know, uh, so huge role. Yeah, media specific, be a specific, then yeah, only we can role. answer it. That's right. Because, you know, politics is all about now media. Yeah, Political exactly, exactly. Politicians are using It's constructed it through media, in fact. Yeah. We are living in a virtual world yeah. where media is constructing our politics. Political parties are using media yeah, to yeah. bring their uh, yes. manifesto. You know, Earlier it was considered to be news hmm. channel, now it is opinion channel. Okay. Now it is new, news construction channel. Okay. Okay then. All right. So, uh, I was saying that people like Mark Poster argues that since Habermas made, produced this theory of public sphere only in the context of that time Germany and it was pre-digital pre Germany. Therefore, with the rise of this internet communication channels and all, one should not take that, that theory as very relevant and we have to develop a new theory of public sphere uh, where not necessarily those four things I mentioned uh, are requirements. I do not agree with that. I think that despite the fact that it has been more democratized now, more and more people can access it and can op express the opinion, uh, the, the idea of the public sphere remains very interesting even now. It explains a lot of things and if we, if we debate issues on internet in a rational way, it will be much more helpful to the democracy. If we do not, then there will be a problem. That is, that is perfectly alright. So, it is just expansion of the horizon. There is no fundamental philosophical change in the idea. The idea is that people have to express themselves, their opinions and this each opinion should contest the other opinion and there should be a democratic contestation of these opinions and that should help the state in measuring the kind of thinking that people are having at the moment and for the citizens it is extremely important. So, it is a relation between the citizen and the state mediated through the ma ma uh, public sphere. Okay. That's, that's the basic idea. I ask you a question uh, on behalf of the Ujjri Center. You uh, asked about the role of uh, media in the politics. How the best way or the uh, optimum use a political party, a politician can use? What is the correct way of using it? See, I think political parties should use media to communicate things to the people, no doubt about it. As far as the communication channel is concerned, it should be done. Uh, it should also be used for for making opinions or or helping people in making opinions. But it should not be misused. It should not be 
no political party should try to misinform people. So hiding information should be treated as a communal offence and constructing information should also be equally treated as communal offence. It is being treated. I think there was a program in which uh, the program was artificially construct created and it was projected as if this was the real situation. When they discovered that program was artificially created, then the lady was punished who made the program. That is there. I think political parties should also follow these norms. Should air their opinion, should answer their oppositions, yes. should make their arguments public. For these things, they should use media. They should not misuse media by hiding certain opinions, by creating wrong, giving wrong opinions, by giving wrong information that should not happen and that is very important. Okay, the, the principle of balance or objectivity what we That's call right. in the… That's right, objectivity, independence, yeah. they should not try to influence, un unduly influence the media. I am told that yeah. uh, people, uh, the media is channels are being funded by the political parties at times, advertisements by the state. Means vague major, statements should major, be avoided. Yeah, vague statements should be avoided. We should not try to play with the image of any political leader. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, and um, you talked about the opinion making. So nowadays you find that there are six people who are talking about uh, the single issues, six different voices, and in one hour, I say half an hour, they want to capture the entire thing. But uh, what the general public uh, seeks the d different dimension or different uh, uh, different views opinion they fail to grasp it because of the um, uh, you say fight or something other uh, even they say comp other means they capture their they, they are busy with their own they are not giving the uh, right uh, things which the people want. So, what could the way the better uh, solution? That's an interesting this? point because you know the way in, uh, uh, particularly Indian media has started debating and all, there is a big problem in that because the debate itself is guided debate and sometimes you bring people from different opinions, don't give time to each other, then pick up one sentence and try to focus only on that. These are the issues that you will face gradually. Okay. But I think the only solution to these issues is the interactive media. Okay. So, well friends. There are uh, many other issues we would like to discuss, but due to paucity of time, we have to conclude the lecture here. I thank all of you for watching the lecture and on behalf, I thank Dr. Eman Thakur for giving such an insightful lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.